managing your skin barrier with these four easy steps. Okay, what's up everyone? We're back. Welcome back to our channel, Dr. Nation. We talk about all things skincare and dermatology. Today, we are talking about skin cycling. So skin cycling is the trend right now. And I think what's interesting about it is, is skin cycling new? I don't know. Uh, it seems to incorporate a lot of things that people have been doing already. And took a little hiatus, so it's been a while since we shot together. Uh, but we're back together ah, shooting. We're out. back together shooting this video. <laughs> we're gonna talk about what skin cycling is, whether we recommend it or not, and we're gonna talk about what we personally do in our own skincare routines. So stay tuned. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, can we also, what, can we talk about the lyrics of that song? What do you think that song's about? Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna comment on what I think this song's about. I think I know what the song is about. It's not a mystery, like skin cycling. I don't know. So skin cycling, I've seen like a hundred videos on this. What the heck is skin cycling? So the idea is pretty much a lot of people's skincare routines are irritating them because they're overusing products. And so this idea of skin cycling came about, this is a term that's coined by Dr. Whitney Bow, who's a dermatologist, basically put a name to a skincare routine. So it's a skincare routine that has a name and it's called skin cycling. Just like any other brand would have a name, it has a name. And the way that it works is that on night one, you exfoliate a retinoid. Exfoliate. exfoliate. You use an exfoliant, a chemical exfoliant, any exfoliant that you want to use. Night two, you use a retinoid. Night three, you take a break and just moisturize. And night four, you take a break and you just moisturize. It's <laughs> not that complicated. You exfoliate, retinoid, moisturize, moisturize, and then you exfoliate, retinoid, moisturize, moisturize. Skin cycling like a routine. And then in the morning, the premise is that your morning routine, whatever it is, just stays the same. So you just don't touch that, your morning stays the same, and then you rotate through in the evenings. So, is this gonna be beneficial? I think it will be beneficial, especially for people who overuse products. I think that's one of the biggest issues we see, and on our channel we've talked about for a long time, that people are over exfoliating. So for seven nights in a row, they're using an exfoliant, maybe on top of a retinoid, and then they're noticing a lot of irritation. Then all of a sudden they introduce something like skin cycling into their routine, and their skin starts getting better because they're respecting their skin barrier. All right, so let's break this down by each step. So we'll start with exfoliating. So for exfoliation, this can be with your physical exfoliant, more likely gonna be a chemical exfoliant like glycolic acid. So here it's gonna be the first step in the skin cycling routine and equates to being just about twice a week overall, which is actually pretty much in line with, I think, what we've recommended in this channel. Where was this routine in 2020, actually? This is the important question because this is where the videos of the, the ordinary exfoliate, the peel, were coming out and we reacted to the video the guy was using it, I don't know, like for an hour. <laughs> yeah, so, so this is a great way to judiciously regulate when you're gonna exfoliate and how often you're gonna do it. I've also said pretty consistently that the older you get, the more important exfoliation becomes in your routine because your skin cells turn over more slowly. And so for younger individuals, you might need to do this less frequently inherently. Right, so we definitely agree with exfoliating twice, once to twice a week. We have the video on how to exfoliate. You can definitely go check that out. But we basically have always maintained that you should not be more exfoliating more than twice a week. So if you're somebody who's noticing that your skin barrier is irritated, your product, your skin is red all the time, you're getting hyperpigmentation, and maybe because you're overusing exfoliant and using something like this where you're gonna break it down to just twice a week would definitely be reasonable to add to your routine. Now, I think one of the most interesting things about this routine and this part of it is is exfoliating such a staple foundation in a skincare routine that it should be in everyone's skincare routine, as much so as perhaps a retinoid or a sunscreen? Because I would say no. I think people with eczema, rosacea, and actively inflamed acne would probably not benefit from exfoliating at all. Mm. So the question is, is skin cycling gonna be a routine that should be good for everybody? Or should you potentially have skin cycling but tailor it and be deliberate to what is actually specific to your needs? So if you have sensitive skin, maybe you cut out the exfoliant step and then you move into something else that's maybe more hydrating or more nourishing to your skin barrier. Exactly, or if you have acne, you just replace that exfoliant step with, again, your retinoid because you probably want to maximize that. And I guess that's a good segue into the next step, which is your retinoid. Right, so retinoids, we're like the channel of retinoids. We're never <laughs> gonna argue with people using a retinoid. Now, going on back there, it's a light show. <laughs> so you'll end up using your retinoid every fourth day. Every fourth day is really good for someone who's starting 
starting with retinoid and is a sensitive skin person. But if you're using it every fourth day, all the studies that have really been done, clinical studies on tretinoin that got it FDA approved, they were using it every night in those studies. And so those, those profound benefits where they're biopsying the skin and showing a lot of benefits to retinoid done more frequently. Now there are studies that show that it can be used less frequently and you still see benefits with it. And there are even studies that show that you can leave it on the skin for short contact for a few hours and then wash it off and then you'll still see benefits with the retinoid. But every fourth day for me, especially if you have acne or you have something that you're really trying to target, it's probably too infrequent for most people to see benefits. But I love that for someone who's starting in skincare. Totally agree. And actually I think that's one of the most common retinoid mistakes and maybe we'll talk about that in a whole nother video. But people, I think the idea that, you know, we, you should start off slow, but then they just stay there slow. And so you're not optimizing that ingredient. You're not getting the most out of your retinoid if you just stop there every few nights and then don't move forward from there. If you're not getting any irritation from your retinoid, the goal is nightly or the goal is daily if you're using a photosensitive or photostable retinoid. I love that caveat. But uh, yeah, the goal is nightly and then you're going to be getting the most out of that ingredient. But that being said, if you're somebody with sensitive skin, you would probably benefit from every fourth day. And this cycling routine would really benefit you then. The next two steps, in fact, are both dedicated to recovery. And so I think this is interesting because we, I don't know, we've specifically talked about this together, but I guess, do you have to take a break from your skincare actives? People talk about this in different settings, so skincare fasting or not using a moisturizer, but all of this almost falls under that umbrella. Taking a break, does your skin need to breathe? That's like one of the things. It's like, you just need to give your skin a break. And I can sort of understand the logic behind that. I love that we're not like not doing doing anything those days. I like yeah. that we're cleansing and moisturizing because moisturizing is gonna help your skin a lot. It just helps, your, especially the newer moisturizers that come out nowadays with like your ceramides and your lipids and your peptides. Like they're actually doing a lot more to your skin. So like I wouldn't say it's a completely inactive night. So it's not fasting. It's not completely fasting, right? So you're not like completely cutting off. So I like that you're doing something those nights, especially because it helps with your routine. That being said, I don't think you necessarily, if your skin is doing fine, right? I don't think you need to take a break. But I do think you'll hear a lot of people say this before, like I had a skincare routine, I've seen a lot of videos on this, where they have like a robust skincare routine, and they spend a lot of money, and then all of a sudden all they use is like Dove Bar Soap, and then their skin gets better. And they're like, well Dove Bar Scope saved my skin. But it's like, no, actually, probably what you were doing to your skin was harming your skin, and then you just cutting back on those things is helping your skin. And so a lot of people will see benefit from taking a break, but it's probably because they're using the wrong product. So I agree with that. And I think when you're talking about the idea of taking a break or pausing your skincare routine, I think you can have a couple things in mind. Either you're concerned about something called tachyphylaxis, where if you use an ingredient long enough, the benefits decrease incrementally. So the more you use it, the actual less benefits you get, the longer it goes. Um, and so we don't really have any evidence that things like exfoliating or retinoids, specifically retinoids, ever that occurs. Like it just doesn't occur where it becomes less effective with more time. So you don't really need to consider that when taking a break from these things. Another thing would be dependency, where if you use it too long, your skin like needs it. So it's important to take a break there. And again, I don't think it falls into these skincare routines for this. Now, the third thing, like Dr. Shaw was saying, I think this is a good time to like reassess. Now, I don't think you need to do it necessarily every couple of days, but maybe a couple times a year, a few times a year, especially if you're not at goal or meeting or getting irritation or adverse events, bad reactions, just pause, take a step back, look at what you're doing, what you're using, and then maybe you reintroduce things slowly. So maybe that's really not recovery at all. <laughs> but it's well, a, you do. Like, well, I think it's a good idea because there was a point where I was getting a lot of irritation on my eyelids. <laughs> and during that time period, taking a break, just moisturizing and cleansing did help my eyelids repair before I could then start introducing my actives back in. So it could be appropriate for you to take a break, but do I think the average person needs to take a break? No, right? I think that your skin is built in a way that if it's doing well, you should continue using your actives and trying to reap the benefits from those actives. I just had like a realization that maybe in 20 years, 30 years, we're going to be in an assisted living or nursing home and he's going to be telling me about his eyelids and we're going to be regaling his eyelid story. It's been two, two, three, four, four years. But at that point, maybe I won't like remember that I told you the story. <laughs> and I won't and just like tell it over and over again as if it's like a new story. Uh, but no, yeah, that probably will happen. So what do we think overall? What do we think about the skin cycling routine, this phenomenon? 
it is a phenomenon. I think it personally can be very beneficial for a select group of people. I think people, especially with sensitive skin or maybe disorganized people who just like have a tough time getting things hashed out in an organized manner and they're just reaching for random products every day. It could be very helpful for them to just organize your team, get some consistency um, and maybe not overdo specific ingredients. Yeah, and I, I love that Dr. Bo put a name and a routine to a very simple skincare routine that people could follow that would not irritate the skin and focuses a lot on moisturizing, which I think is great and I think it's gonna benefit a lot of people. It, do you need to change your routine because you discovered skin cycling? No, I mean, I think that it's just like any other skincare routine. It has a name to it and it has a routine that you can follow, which is not that complicated. I've seen people take out like graphs and charts and like they're doing like mathematical calculations to figure this thing out. It's just, you just, like, it's not that it's, not that simple. it's a pretty simple routine, <laughs> and it, it will be easy for a lot of people to fall. So if you have sensitive skin, I would consider skin cycling, especially if you're someone who's targeting anti-aging because exfoliation and retinoid target both of those things. That being said, if you have a great routine, don't change it. Um, just follow your routine that works for you. This is more for people with sensitive skin or somebody who's noticing irritation with their current skincare routine. Yeah, exactly. And then I think, you know, you'll look at Dr. Bo's videos as well and you'll see her kind of tailor and tweak and react to different takes on this and that's perfect. That's that's like the whole part of skincare is personalize it, individualize it, be deliberate. And so you can take this routine. If this is a great routine that works for you, just take it, personalize it, like plug something in except instead of exfoliation if that's not a priority step for you. Um, or if you don't need both recovery phases, then just plug in another retinoid there or something like that. So you can tailor this to you. The whole thing is just to build a foundation to help you along. Right, and if you look at our intro video to this channel that hasn't changed in two years, <laughs> we talk about cleanse, treat, protect, and during the treatment, phase of your skincare routine, you tailor that to your problems and you be deliberate with that. And which is why we don't share our skincare routines is because we want you to craft the perfect skincare routine that's going to actually target your problems and not copy other people's skincare routines. So this is a great start. Build on top of that to a routine that's actually going to target your problems. So the question is, are you skin cycling? Um, I'm cycling in my own way in that. Okay. So Retinoids, well cleanser, retinoids, and sunscreen are probably my foundation. Like those are always in there in some fashion. But then I think just by virtue of what we do, I'm always trying random products. So I don't have a great routine, but I actually suspect a lot of influencers, dermatologists also don't because they're just always got new products. We're always trying something yeah. new. They always, they, the saying is that a carpenter's house always needs work, right? And that's because we probably don't follow a good routine. <laughs> but ultimately, the idea is that like, we can tell you what to do, we probably won't do it ourselves ultimately. But my routine, has always been a retinoid five or six nights a week with an exfoliant one night a week and those are the key hit heavy hitters for me and then the morning you know usually just sunscreen to keep it simple so you know just keep it simple find a routine that works for you skin cycling is a great start and uh but you know not every trend is for everybody there you have it skin cycling skin cycling 101 <laughs> thank you all so much for tuning in please like comment and subscribe and we'll see you in the next video we'll see you next time